Well, here we are. I'm finally tackling one of the most infamous movies of all time. Mind you, I never planned to review this thanks to more competent reviewers than I doing it better than even I think I can. This doesn't mean I haven't seen this movie multiple times without the reviewers. No, I'm not kidding. I have seen this movie about five times before I wrote this review. So why do it now? With it being a part of the current guest show, I decided that now is the best time. This movie is, to most people, cool cat levels of horrible. And to think that someone almost completely stopped this movie from being released. Yeah, right before it was finished, someone swooped in and stole the data for the movie. But being the diligent psychopath that he is, Lawrence Kasanoff, who produced the first Mortal Kombat movie, wanted to get it done. So, four years and more than a few CAT scans later, Food Fight was released, then thrown into oblivion before people like our own Bob Show brought it to the light. Let's get this started. This is Food Fight. The movie takes place at a store called Marketopolis, which has lightings to make a well-used joke. I just think that the market word is poorly placed. Oh, this isn't going to be the only occasion of that, I assure you. Just closing up. Nothing much happens around here after dark. Well, I'm glad you've never had a nighttime burglar. Also, who even says that? We go inside the store when all of a sudden... <laughs> and the drug-induced hallucination begins. We're just hit with a barrage of images and characters that literally have nothing to do with the movie proper. And then we meet... Listen up, fat cat burglar. Hi, Charlie. Yep, that's Charlie Sheen, pre-mental breakdown, playing Dex Doc Detective, a mascot for a cinnamon-based cereal. He's confronting a burglar, voiced by Harvey Fierstein who, while he is a major stage veteran, I know best for playing Robin Williams' brother in Mrs. Doubtfire. Dex is confronting him because he catnapped a basket of kittens. If I had a raisin for every time I've heard that one. I have no comment on that. None. At all. He gets rid of Rufus's half-baked grandkids by having them jump after a cheese wedge. How the hell did he- Nope, if I question it, it will just make this review much, much longer than it already will be. So I'm just going to leave it as is and move right along. And if you want an idea on how bad the animation here is, just watch as Dex glides like a flying brick. Matter of fact, if you took this frame and compared it to the way a 3D model is posed by default, uh, let's use Woody here for example, it's pretty damn similar. In other words, they didn't even bother to animate him as he fell. After he just ignores the laws of gravity, he rescued the kittens and went to meet up with his best friend, Daredevil Dan, voiced by Wayne, I'm waiting for Let's Make a Deal's comeback, Brady. And if there's any noteworthy characters in this movie, he is one of them, but not for the right reasons. You can do it. As long as you got me to help you, did I mention me? Dex shows him a ring he got for his girlfriend, we'll get to her in a sec, when... You could... Four carrots? What did you do about the food bank? One, why did you do that spin? It was entirely unneeded. Two, I hope you liked that pun, because most of the characters only talk like that. You think you're talking to? Come on! I could ask you the same thing! Turn back around! This... Don't you try to guilt trip me, you shit sobbing buffoon! We finally meet his girlfriend, the blank eyed sunshine goodness, voiced by Hilary Duff. Okay, you little Ikes, bye bye! Okay, I'm going to explain this to you guys since the movie either forgot to or just didn't care enough to. 
Each of the characters in this fucked up world has a mascot of their respective products. They call themselves Ikes because they are the icons used to promote their brands. See how simple it was to say that? It took two sentences to explain a vital bit of information that this movie should have portrayed but didn't. Next thing to note about Sunshine is that she's supposed to be part cat. Again, two issues. She's supposed to be a cat, yet she's a mascot for raisins? Granted, that kind of explains Dex's love for raisins now that I think of it. The other issue is that she's part cat, and yet she only has the ears and the tail. Not trying to sound like a shameless plug, but in my review of Justice League's Injustice for All 2-parter, I point out how their rendition of Cheetah was portrayed. I know there's a trope in anime where girls will only have the ears and tail of an animal, but, and you can call me a furry if you want, I don't care, it would look a lot more consistent if they did something with her overall color scheme. They don't need to show that she has some fur, but just imagine if she was, say, calico colored. Yeah, it would be just as jolting as anything else in this movie, but since she's a cat, it'd make a little bit more sense. Then again, it is food fight, so... <laughs> it warms my heart the way you love my raisins, tough guy. They have a dinner where Dex is about to propose to Sunshine, and after a crash by Daredevil Dan, who by the way is a shit flyer, she runs off to check on him. I'm surprised she's even running in the right direction. No, not because of her eyes, but because of the competency of these characters. Dan returns much later, but Sunshine doesn't. <laughs> Don't worry, it ain't like it's the last time you're ever gonna see Sunshine again. Yeah, for some reason, Dan, I kind of call bullshit. And what? What the actual hell? <laughs> this very hilarious freaking nature is the overseer of Brand X, voiced by who the fuck else? Christopher Lloyd, whose career has recently flatlined. I'm your new Brand X representative. I just got out of the mental ward. Banana. Oh. <laughs> you are legitimately, unlegitimately terrifying. Also, you bastard, you stole my hairstyle. I'm sorry, guys. I actually love when this guy comes on screen. He cracks me up while making me feel a little bit uneasy inside. It's practically addictive. Hey, you said it, not me. Then we're taken back to the market world where Dex has a bad nightmare about sunshine. But he's jolted back into the nightmare he lives in thanks to Dan who reminds him he's now the owner of the Copacabana. I said Copa Banana. I know what I said, damn it! Stop mocking me! After some... Oh, mamacita! Yo, sweet cakes! Oh, nice packaging! Casual perviness. Dumbass Dan crashes into a tree. <laughs> Why, well, of course I can provide you with a backstage pass to the Copa Banana. Meet Cheezle T. Weasel. And as the texture on this model can tell, he is a shit character. Also, you want to know what Larry Kasanoff sounds like? Now you know! You despise me, don't you? Take comfort in the fact that you're not alone. After that schlock, we arrive at the Copa Banana, which has the California Raisins performing. Oh right, this movie is supposed to have a large number of real product mascots. It being set in the store, that would make sense, except they do jack fucking shit, as I am going to explain later on. Uh, you better go easy on the potato juice before you get... <laughs> chip faced. Get it? Then we are introduced to Lady X who is portrayed with exactly zero regrets by Eva Longoria. This character adds a new layer of uneasiness as she makes many scenes in this movie oddly sexual. Remember Jessica Rabbit? Well take her, make her evil, and go way off the deep end with her. Hell, many of the scenes with her and I say this with a straight face, were supposedly based on little jokes that the animators had among themselves. Then why were they added in, I hear you asking? 
it was because of Larry Kasanoff, who would catch them and thinking it would be great for the movie, told them to add the joke scenes in. The New York Times made an article about the movie, in which an animator by the name of Mona Weiss said, I thought they were just having fun with this. It won't make it into the finished film. Clearly, this wasn't the case. And here's another stupid question, as this movie is full of them. Why is Lady X a mascot for detergent? Later on, it's revealed that the formula that they use for Brand X is both toxic and addictive. Wouldn't it make a bit more sense for her to be a mascot for something hot yet edible? Say, a cinnamon candy or, no wait, hot sauce. That would have been perfect. Why couldn't they go with that? What? Hey, if this movie can make comments about how quote unquote hot she is, why shouldn't I? Perfect. If this is where you expect me to say roll credits, ah uh, ha ha ha, we're not even halfway done. After a lot of useless animation, Dex has the entire club cleared in two frames. Lady X leaves with dumbass Dan. How about one more innuendo for the road, Lady X? Chicks dig chocolate. Back at the office, he... Crying over spilt milk. Even though I know what I just said, this still looks unnatural. I'm looking for a guy about your height. You do know you're technically breaking a few laws right now, right? While she clings to him like he's a tree, he catches a familiar scent. Last year I was recalled. Gee, I wonder what also happened the year before. He goes to leave when... Wait! I haven't shown you my secret ingredient. The secret's inside. Inside what? You've said that line multiple times and it doesn't make a lick of sense. They find a group of Ikes that were wiped out to be exact. They were the ones that Dex kicked out. You know, the nostalgic critic made a large joke about how Mr. Clean popped out of nowhere just for a single joke. But it actually leads to a much larger issue that revolves around these mascots. One I personally don't think he properly stated. Yeah, shots fired, I don't care about that. The problem is that the movie has quite a number of brand named mascots, and yet a very large number of them, outside of Polar Penguin for some reason, barely has a line. Mr. Clean doesn't even speak at all. For contrast, let's look at Wreck-It Ralph. Yes, it has a ton of video game characters, but at least in that movie, the makers cared enough and respected the characters enough to give them a line or two to make them feel like an actual character. That bad guy seminar, for example, may very well be one of my favorite moments in animated film for that very reason alone. Here it just feels like the writers didn't care. Or if they did, they were screwed over whenever Larry decided to force in another animator's joke. Suddenly, Brand X replacements come in that next day to fill in for the deceased Ikes, and Dex finally suits up to go and investigate. However, at this large town hall meeting, Nazis? We'll come back to that in a second. Security around here! You stole the train off! I recognize that voice. Why is Jerry Stiller here? I Guess times got hard after the King of Queens? The lady wants the detective. Perhaps he's been very, very bad. Hello, Johnny Bravo. When did you get here? That is Jeff Bennett voicing the sick as fuck <coughs> lieutenant. What do I mean by sick as fuck? <coughs> oh, you'll find out. The lieutenant pushes Cheezel off a rooftop about four stories up. Then halfway across town, he pops out from between Tex's legs. Okay, as I wrote that last part, I actually kind of laughed, even though this thing should have died twice by now. He tells Dex that dumbass Dan left for Lady X's place. Now let's talk about the Nazi element. Yes, one thing this movie was roasted for was its Nazi overtones, and did this thing deserve it? They're not even trying to be subtle about it. 
Indiana Dex scales the building, getting inside the Meet Lady X along with more sexual innuendos. Look, I'm just going to skip the most of this scene because all that happens is a lot of terrible banter between the two which results in Dex getting knocked out. He wakes up in a huge drying machine, and the way they get out is mind numbing. Socks! That's it! Socks always escape from the dryer! I just... I don't know how many times I can call BULLSHIT! What the fudge? They're building an entire army of robotic exobites. Okay, movie, mind cluing us in as into what the fuck an exobite is? No, of course not! I'll do it for you! An exobite is a machine used to drug Ikes into a near death like state. Again, how easy was that? The Brand X people all march through the streets in a hilarious fashion. Only Brand X officials are permitted in the aisle. All violators will be punished. I do so hope they're the violators. Jeff, my friend, they didn't pay you enough for this role. And then we meet and Sir. Exo! Brand X! Oh, why me? Why? Why Brand X? Why? No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Why not, uh, let's see you. Dr. Pepper, Dr. Scholes, Dr. Feel Good! Shut up, you terrible Jewish stereotype! Anyways. This concoction that Brand X is using, like I mentioned before, is both toxic and addictive to humans. Glad to see people can get addicted to detergent, despite how toxic it is. So they decide to go out in the daytime to the store owner's office to send an email trying to get Brand X recalled. And as soon as they step out, they face off against this ugly lunch lady looking blob. They run from her, coming across what I imagine to be Tommy Pickles in CGI, coupled with a monstrosity that wouldn't look out of place in Psychonauts. Okay then, as they escape, Dex tells Polar to warn the other Ikes about Brand X, and to gather at his club, before Dex and Dumbass Dan reaches the expiration station. And here they meet Count Chocula, I mean, Vlad Chakul. An undead vampire who has a fetish for chocolate. And since Dumbass Dan is made of chocolate, it makes Vlad one of the more unsettling characters of the movie. With the help of a computer sprite thing, I'm not even going to bother, they find out that Brand X recalled Sunshine and someone named Priscilla Pusley. But right as they sent out a recall form on Brand X, the power to the room gets shut off. So they work to get out and group with the rest of the Ikes to prepare for battle. From this day forward, you must prove you are desirable. Says the Nazi dominatrix. Once Dex regroups with the rest of the Ikes, who are fending off a small squad of Brand X, they... Sing the French National Anthem. Alright. The Brand X people bolt, and Dex uses the time to give a rousing speech. whatever. And it is here where we get an extensive, and extensively horrible, battle sequence that goes on and on and on and on and on and on! So for the sake of time, I'm not even going to mess with it. It simply isn't worth it. Fools! I'll destroy them all! <laughs> How low can you go, Lady X? So they plan to use aluminum foil in a thunderstorm in a way that completely goes against everything science teaches us. The plan is to make little aluminum markers and plant them on top of buildings not belonging to Brand X. And when an electric storm comes by to attack them, thanks to a downed power pole, the electricity will not destroy the buildings with the foil markers on them. I can't even begin to describe how stupid that is. After many casualties, Dex tells the doctor to make an antidote, before he and Dumbass Dan goes to Brand X Tower. Meanwhile, Cheezle cuts down a power pole to get the stupidity storm started. Dex makes it into the tower where we find Sunshine SHE WAS RECALLED AS IN GONE! No, forget it. I'm not the one who's gonna be puppy whipped, you cold farted itch. Okay, that I won't forget. What the fuck? <laughs> Was there literally no other insult you could have slung at her? Not only did that one make no sense at all, like the rest of this 
Quack movie, it was absolutely abysmal. He helps Sunshine escape while doing the sicko in. Oh. Well, this isn't very much fun, is it? I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. Oh. Jeff, they very, very clearly did not pay you enough for this role. The hell did they do to you, man? After a touching moment, Dan swings by to save them before the building collapses. The sun is shining again, baby! Turn around, dumbass. Turn around, dumbass. Turn around, dumbass! Thank you! That was the smartest thing you've done all movie. Once they land, the representative charges through the street. Because this movie doesn't follow its own rules, apparently. And after Dex and his friends cause the big guy to fall over, they reveal it to be a robot run by Lady X, who was originally Priscilla. Gasp. But enough about me. Let's kill you! <laughs> okay, okay. I honestly laugh every time I hear that garbage line. It's so bad. But enough about me. Let's kill you! Since Dex refuses to fight back, Sunshine steps in to clean the lady's clock and through more horrid animation... Sunshine chip slapped her back the ugly! After they beat Brand X, the doc steps up with the antidote, saving the entire store. We end the story with Dex and Sunshine finally getting married. What more is there to say? This movie is a complete mess from start to end. However, with it being as bad as it is, there honestly were a lot of moments I kind of do enjoy. The representative is hilarious, and there is the odd line every now and again that is pretty funny, though whether it's intentional or not depends to be seen. But in the end, I have to say, this is not the worst animated thing I've ever seen. Granted, the animation in this movie is rancid, you can't say there wasn't at least some effort put in. No, it can always get worse. My final score for this movie is a 3 out of 10. Thank you for watching this with me. Thank you to Bob Show for hosting this video, and I will see you guys next time. Later! Stamp on the ground, jump, 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 move it all around, jab, jab, da, da. Quack.